10, 9, 8, Launch auto sequence 7, has started. 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Go for launch. Looking to get to Mars in less time than watching all the Star Wars movies? Then you might be interested in this new fusion rocket that could make your dreams come true. Or slice them to pieces like Obi-Wan did to... Sorry, I got a bit emotional there. Let's move on. Mars has been a target of exploration for decades, ever since the first robotic probes were sent there in the 1960s. Since then, we've learned a lot about the Red Planet, such as its history, geology, climate, and potential for life. But we've never sent humans there. Why not? Well, because it's very hard, and expensive, and dangerous. And did I mention hard? Yeah, the loop goes on. To get to Mars, you need a rocket. A big one. A really big one. You see, Mars is very far away from Earth. Depending on their positions in their orbits around the Sun, the distance between Earth and Mars can vary from about 55 million kilometers, or 34 million miles, to about 400 million kilometers, or 250 million miles. That's a lot of space to cross. To give you some perspective, the second fastest spacecraft ever launched by humans was NASA's New Horizons probe, which reached a speed of about 58,000 kilometers per hour, or 36,000 miles per hour, when it flew past Pluto in 2015. At that speed, it would take about 39 days to get to Mars when it's closest to Earth, and about 287 days when it's farthest. But that's just for unmanned probes. As we all know, launching an unmanned probe to Mars is extremely easy. You just need a rocket that can toss a metal cube across the cosmic void and hope it doesn't smash into anything. Yeah, right, like that's easy. But launching humans to Mars? That's a whole different ball game. You need a much bigger rocket that can not only carry the crew, but everything they need to survive and explore. That includes their living quarters, supplies, experiments, equipment, and return vehicle. You'll also need enough fuel to push and pull all that mass. That's like trying to launch a house into space and make it fly. And you thought assembling IKEA furniture was hard. But how do you get such a massive rocket off the ground in the first place? That's where traditional rockets come in. Imagine a giant metal tube filled with stuff that can explode and shoot out hot gas at crazy speed. That's what a traditional rocket is. The stuff inside the tube can be solid or liquid or both. But what's the difference between these two types of propellants and why does it matter? Let me explain. Liquid propellant rockets are like fancy espresso machines in the rocket world. They're more expensive than solid propellant rockets, but they also have more features and benefits. These rockets can turn on and off at their convenience and maneuver and adjust their speed during flight. They also have more thrust and mileage than their solid counterparts, and let's not forget, they are eco-friendly. Liquid propellant rockets use two kinds of propellants to make thrust, a fuel and an oxidizer. The fuel is usually a substance such as hydrogen or kerosene, and the oxidizer is a substance such as oxygen or nitrogen tetroxide. When these two ingredients are blended and lit up in a fire chamber, they make a hot gas that zooms out of a nozzle at a crazy speed. Now, one of the baddest rockets ever launched by humans was NASA's Saturn V rocket, which was used to send the Apollo missions to the moon in the 1960s and 1970s. This rocket was so powerful that it could lift about 130 tons of stuff into low Earth orbit, which is about 200 kilometers, about half the length of New York State, above the Earth. That's enough to carry three astronauts in a command module, a service module with life support and propulsion systems, a lunar module with landing gear and ascent stage, and a launch escape system. But that's not enough to get to Mars. You need another rocket stage that can do a special trick called a trans-Mars injection, TMI, maneuver. This is basically a kick that puts your spacecraft on a weird orbit around the sun that crosses paths with Mars's orbit. It's like playing a game of cosmic catch with the red planet and hoping it doesn't throw you back. The TMI maneuver needs a lot of delta V, which is a fancy way of saying how much you can change your speed. You can get more delta V by using better engines and lighter spacecraft, not just more power and gas, depending on how much stuff you want to take with you to Mars. Like your clothes, your snacks, your books, you may need several launches of smaller rockets to build your spaceship in orbit. So there must be a smarter and more efficient way to travel to Mars than relying on traditional rockets because as you can see, traditional rockets suck. Okay, that was too harsh, but let's say they are heavy, pricey, and picky. They only launch when Earth and Mars are aligned or close, which happens once every 26 months. They also must carry enough fuel for the return trip. 
which adds more mass and cost. Yeah, maybe it is not too harsh after all. And that's where Direct Fusion Drive comes in. Direct Fusion Drive DFD is a new technology that's being developed by a UK-based company called Pulsar Fusion, which is a compact nuclear fusion engine that could provide both thrust and electrical power for spaceships. It's based on the same principle that powers the sun and other stars, nuclear fusion. Nuclear fusion is a term that you may have heard a lot, but what does it actually mean? Well, it's a way of making energy by smashing two small atoms together to make one big atom. Sounds simple, but it's actually very hard and complicated. Several experiments have been able to do it in a controlled and sustainable way for power generation, but not in a commercially viable way. They use more energy than they produce, or they are too expensive and complex to operate. But if we can overcome these challenges, we can have a lot of clean and cheap energy for the future. It's like the ultimate dream of science fiction, or the ultimate nightmare of science horror. Depends on how you look at it. Pulsar Fusion aims to turn this dream into reality by building a fusion technology that can power spaceships and planets. Imagine you could copy the sun's secret recipe for making energy and use it to power your own rocket. That's what fusion propulsion is all about. You take some super hot soup of atoms, called plasma, and trap it in a magnetic cage. Then you crank up the heat until the atoms start to fuse together, releasing a huge amount of energy. This energy pushes your rocket forward faster than any other engine can. Fusion propulsion is like having a mini sun in your rocket, except you can turn it on and off whenever you want. That's Pulsar Fusion for you, except for the 90% simplified version. Yeah, don't blame me for that, it is rocket science. But what can this fusion engine do that other engines can't? Well, forget about boring old rockets that take forever to get anywhere. With fusion propulsion, you can reach Mars in half the time and explore Saturn's moons in just two years. Plus, you don't have to worry about running out of fuel because fusion propulsion is super efficient and uses very little of it. Fusion propulsion is the ultimate way to travel in style and speed. Pulsar Fusion is not just dreaming of the stars, they are reaching for them. I know it sounds like a commercial ad, but it's not as easy as flipping a switch and blasting off. You need to heat up plasma to crazy temperatures, like millions of degrees, and squeeze it really hard to make it fuse. And then you need to keep it in a cage of magnets so it doesn't escape and melt your spaceship. That's some serious engineering. So don't get too excited about Pulsar Fusion's engine just yet. It may be the future of space travel, or it may just be another pipe dream. Only time will tell. Until then, keep dreaming of the stars, but don't forget to look at Earth. It's still the only home we have. Thanks for watching. If you loved the video or learned something new, don't forget to like and subscribe. See you next time.